my laptop is broken, so I'm currently borrowing a friend's. That might mean that my settings, my audio settings, are a little bit borked right now. So hopefully it's not too terrible. I hope to have my original laptop up and running in the next few days. That is the plan. So this is episode 13 of the Whitlings prototype. And I think what I'd like to do is let's try and get some face control going in our game. <clears throat> so as of right now, we are randomly populating our face container with one of these face types. And I guess the first thing that I'd like to do, and I think this will be the easiest, is randomize the rotation on that face. And the second thing I want to try to do today, I'm not sure if we'll have time, I think it would be very useful to be able to set certain faces on these cubes and set the the face that you want it to be there and the starting rotation as well. I think that's going to be a little bit more involved, but if we give ourselves that power, that means that we can um, make a level with some cubes, we can build the path that we want to test, and then we can hit run and see if that path is working. Currently, I do believe our paths are still pretty solid. I have been getting this strange assertion um, when I'm testing sometimes. I think it's here. Yeah. <clears throat> I still get this assertion saying, hey, we have some code that's warning us, but it's not actually breaking anything. Everything still seems to be working just fine. Oh, there we go. So yeah, <clears throat> it looks like our paths are generating just fine, which is what we want. So let's add some randomization. I think the easiest way to do this is going to be to modify our cube face. And we can do a serialized field here. Private randomize rotation. And we'll set that default value to false, right? Oh, that's another, a few other things about this machine that I'm using. Um, the keyboard layout is different. So that's going to trip me up a whole bunch. And also, this machine doesn't have my drawing program. So. That's going to be a little bit of a hurdle. Hopefully we won't have to do too many visualizations or we don't have to go to the drawing board too many times today. But I guess worst case scenario, I can use Microsoft Paint. You know, one of the most perfect fruits of programming ever made. So we've got a randomized rotation, break paths. Um, here's in Awake where we get all of the path nodes, we grab the renderers. So, you know, I guess we could just do this in awake. We could say if randomize rotation, what we want to do is we want to randomize some number. Remember that our cubes, we always want it to be um, exactly aligned at 90 degrees, right? So, hmm. I'm a little bit worried about floating point errors that might show up. Uh, let me write this episode 013, base control. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried about floating point errors, just because um, since our game has a lot of very precise math inside of it, 
That means that if these faces, I guess it's just the cube that we really, really care about. I think our faces, we can allow for a very, very small floating point error. Yeah, I think that should be okay. <clears throat> so let's give it a shot. What I'd like to do is I want to be able to spin it three times to the left. Well, yeah, I guess we can just go but like zero rotation, 90, 180, 270, and that's enough. So let's call this a integer. Rotation roll. And I think, remember, we have our random pool. RNG pool type cube face. Now, this is a little bit of a problem, and it's something to pay attention to. Because we are using this randomized pool again, that means all of our previous seeds are going to be changed right because random this random pool it's always going to return the same random numbers in a certain order but by asking for new random numbers in different places in our code that means that other roles are going to be changed and so the the state of our setup is going to be different i'm okay with doing that now i, I do believe that our current test setup has um it's been tested okay, not super thoroughly, but enough for me to feel somewhat confident. Max value is 3. So 0, 1, 2, 3. And I'm not 100% sure, so I'm just going to do a quick test here. Rotation roll equals 3. And we'll just print out, oh boy, max inclusive. And we're going to delete this as soon as we see it. I just wanted to make sure. So, if that is the case, we want to rotate our cube face around its up, its transform dot up. So, transform dot rotate's got a couple options. So, we want to rotate it around this transform dot up. And our rotation roll times 90. Hmm. I think that's it. So, <clears throat> and you know what's funny? We don't really ever need to rotate the no path face. That would be very silly. So I'm going to randomize the rotation for our straight and randomize rotation for our L prefab. <laughs> That's definitely not what I was expecting. Oh, buddy. What are you doing here? This is the back face, which is correct. Oh, you know what? I think we wanted to do it in world space. Hey, that looks a lot better. <clears throat> Very cool. And we can see that some of these um, L faces are, these straight paths are vertical, some of them are horizontal. 
Let's do some quick testing. Nice. Oh, that's an impossible path. Okay, so let's go back to this one. Try walking up here. Very cool. That makes me happy. Uh, let's see how far we can get. This is the problem that I was talking about, where since we don't really have a lot of control over our cubes, uh, some paths are completely dead. Oh my, is that possible? I do believe that, yeah, this is going to connect under... So we should see our red line get all the way down here. Okay. Excellent. So we've got our randomization. Like I said, pretty straightforward. But I think now what I would like to do... Ooh. Do I want... So here's our cube face spawner. Maybe we don't want this randomize. Um... Hmm. Let's take a look at our logic in our cube face spawner. So these are our directions. And so here we loop through our face index. We get a current face from the face dictionary. And then we create a prefab variable. If we're randomizing, then we're extracting from this. Otherwise, so I think this is what we need to change. We want to say if the designer has selected a face prefab or a location, use that. Otherwise, if random, randomize, sure. What should we do if nothing is there? Maybe just randomize by default, randomize anything that's not set. That seems like a good idea. I'll say randomize anything that is not predefined by the designer. Let's think about the data that we're going to need for the designer to be able to place things in the world. Kind of sucks a little bit. We could jump through some hoops because right now the easiest way to go about doing this is going to be kind of like we're doing it now. You know, just spawn the thing and then go. The downside to that is we won't be able to see it in the inspector. 
like we won't be able to see it in the scene view. And I think that's a pretty big, um, you want to be able to just look at the level and easily tell this is what the main core of the level is supposed to look like. These are the challenges that we've designed for the player to try and conquer. <clears throat> and that's possible, but that's getting into script, custom uh, editors, custom inspectors maybe, which, you know, we'll, we'll probably get to that at some point in the future, but I don't think we need to go there now. So... Yes, we need to find out. There's three pieces of data that we need. We need the face that we're going to attach it to, the direction of the cube of the face. We need the prefab that we're going to be using, and then we need the starting rotation as well. Cube face spawn data so let's make another class and let's have this be system serializable and this is going to be <laughs> starting cube face data So let's see, <clears throat> like I said, we're going to need two, three things. The game object for the face prefab. Then a rotation. But I'm not sure that I want the Hello, Thunderbutt. Welcome back. You always know when I'm streaming, don't you? Oh, sorry, lady. If it was my machine, I would let you hang out, but it's not mine, so I have to be very careful. Okay, now that the special guest segment is over, I... I'm not sure how I want to do this. I guess we could just have an array of these things. Or a set? No. I'm sort of struggling with the best way to go about doing this because... What I'd like to see in the inspector is, okay, I have an enum over here, and that's the face direction, and on this face direction, I am assigning um, a dang it. No Thunderbutt, no. <laughs> Just don't want there to be multiple faces there. Like, I don't want there to be two ups, because then, you know, our code's going to pick one of them, and maybe it was the designer's mistake. We want to be able to sort of protect that, protect them from that sort of thing. So let's just make an array of, what did I call this? Starting cube, 
base data. Oh, she's angry now. She's knocking off all of my pens, my writing utensils. Okay, I'm gonna ignore you. I'm gonna keep writing code, Thunderbutt. Jeez. Hmm, 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 hmm. It's really hard to think when you have a cute cat in your face. It just short circuits parts of the brain. So we've got our array. And I think what we'll do is we'll add the protection in later. For now, we're just gonna make sure it works. And then we can be a little bit safer with it, right? So we've got this array. And yeah, we'll just have a public cube face direction. Face direction to choose. And so let's see. So here we're doing our cast. We're casting face index to this enum. So let's make a cube face direction variable. Current face direction. And we'll do this cast here. Current face direction. So we want to see if in our data list we have a cube or we have a prefab stored with that current face direction. Starting cube face data. This, this is the class, I think. Starting face. Starting faces. Uh, we should probably do a control RR. There we go. Yeah, this really sucks. I don't want to have to loop through this entire array here. I mean, it's going from an O of N to an O of N squared, but our N is set. Our N is six. So that is a small number. So I think I will allow this to happen. Starting faces? Yeah, there we go. Come on. So we're going to loop in here, and actually, I guess, no, if um, current face direction is equal to starting faces at start face index dot face direction.
a designer has designated a set base here. So that would be in starting faces at start face index at face prefab. And then we can break out of this loop. And instead of this randomize here, we can say if face prefab equals null, do the thing. Oh, you know what? We never checked. So we've already set our face prefab up here. Then here we spawn, here we set the parent, we move it, we rename it. This is silly. <laughs> Yeah, that is definitely not something that we want to have here. We don't need that anymore. So this is a little bit tricky because we sort of have conflicting things that we could be telling these faces. This spawner, we're trying to say, hey, there's this set rotation that I want you to always use. But our cube face, we just implemented this randomize face thing. So let's go back to our cube face and let's extract this into its own function. And we'll hop up to our public. Tape face along up. Let's write two separate functions set face rotation. Float rotation amount. And then we can randomize face rotation. So our rotation roll was never printing out this three, so I think that we need to have a four here. Get rid of this, I believe. And let's just copy pasta here. There we go. So in our cube face spawner, we're instantiating the face prefab. Let's create a boolean for 
is set by designer. And we can set that to true in here. It should allow us to, depending on the value stored in this bool, we can tell our face to behave correctly. So that means we're going to need a cube face, current face component. And then we'll say if is set by designer, current face component, dot set rotation. Oh, you know what? We might need to store, yeah, we're gonna need to store all of this data here. So instead of just remembering the face prefab, we're gonna need the starting cube face data. So we can start that out as null. Whoa, hey, oh my gosh. <laughs> so we'll remember that. Oops, that is a uh, current face data dot prefab. There we go, we're passing it our start rotation. And if it's not set by the designer, then we can take the current face component and we can randomize face rotation. Okay, it seems to be happy. Two warnings. <clears throat> we'll clean up our warning stuff later. So, let's do the simplest test imaginable first. Starting faces, we're going to have one of those. And this is going to be up. Let's do a straight path face with zero rotation. And on this one here, Let's do two, and we'll say up is a straight path with 90s rotation. And the second one is backwards, that's facing towards the camera. Let's do a straight path with 180. Excellent! Very cool! Let's double, triple, quadruple check. So this face has no rotation. That's awesome. Oh. Oh, I clicked on the same one. <laughs> there we go. This one has 90. And this one has, well, essentially 180. Rotations are a little bit weird when you start dealing with quaternions. That's maybe something we could talk about at a point in the future. Because we played with quaternions, we did a slurp, or maybe just a lerp. I think we just did a lerp, but um, quaternions are really important when dealing with rotation. If we didn't use quaternions and we just used an x, a y, and a z number, 
things would break pretty often. Um, and that's why we see this sort of weird thing here. We rotated it 180 on the Y, but this is the actual math that results. The rotation is the same, just a very interesting byproduct of the quaternion internals. So, dang. Uh, let's test our L pieces. So up, we'll have a zero L. Let's make two of these. So this will be back L270. This is up 90 and back 180. Nice. <clears throat> so you can see here we have a lot more control over what's going to be spawned now. Hmm. We still cannot see it before we enter play mode, and that's going to bother me for a long time, I think. I guess I'm not too worried about it now. We can we can put that on our list of things to do. Really? I thought my document Oh. <laughs> our two uh doesn't have an extension on it. There we go. That's why Visual Studio wasn't recognizing this to do that TXT. Uh, add random rotation to faces in the appropriate direction. That is done. Uh, you know what? Let's um, instead of deleting that, let's have a done section, right? Mm -hmm. There we go. So we want to show designer set faces outside of play mode. Okay. Let's make sure that these work. Oh no. Interesting, it worked going that way. Yeah, it's this assertion failed. This seems like a really bad idea, but let's just try commenting this out. I don't know. I don't know why this is happening. But maybe we don't need that there because it could be zero. Did that break things? Oh my. So this node doesn't actually recognize that it's overlapping a link path node on same cube. So, let's just turn off all the other cubes.
That's fine. Nothing. How about you? What? <laughs> huh. It's almost like this is a one a unidirectional connection. So this guy has none. Oh, interesting. So this one is actually connected. This face here is connected to the one that's currently up. But this face here is not connected to this one here. Honestly, I'm kind of thinking about reworking this whole face connection system. I think we're pretty darn close, but eventually we're going to have to start I want to do some crazier paths, and I want to be able to test those crazy paths and make sure that those connections are working before I actually commit to, um, you know, starting to make content. <clears throat> yeah, maybe what we could do is let's start making some crazy faces. Is that worth it? Is that really worth the time and effort? That's always a question you have to ask yourself, like Yes, I want to do X, Y, and Z, but uh, first of all, how much will each of those cost me in time? And that's always a guess. You never have you never have any clue how long it's going to take. Sometimes it's quick. Sometimes it's painful. Um, but you have to think about how much time am I going to put into this, and what benefit am I going to get out of it? And I think that creating the, the meshes at runtime is kind of cool. But I don't know. It might be easier just to create the meshes um, and save them, you know, write some code to generate the meshes, but then just save them into our resources folder as objects instead of instead of generating them every time. You know, any amount of data that you can pre-bake, that you can pre-calculate, is going to speed up your game's execution. However, most of these things that, you know, I'm just using these super simple primitives, right? So it's not really going to save too much time. But it might be a good thing to investigate. So the ultimate goal... Well... Oh, you know what? Let's try testing this by setting these back to zero. Uh, 
that's not a very <laughs> exciting role there. Interesting. So I think what I'm doing, I'm considering just totally ditching on trigger enter <clears throat> and only using it for special cases, you know, like only handle on trigger enter if we've got cubes that actually move laterally in space. <clears throat> I don't even know how. Um, I mean, I think that would be a cool design element to add. But I don't even know if we would need it then. Because it wouldn't be a Mario platform that always moved back and forth. You would need some sort of system to where you would flip a switch, the cube would slide over to a position, lock there, and then once that translation was done, then it would recalculate um, all of its neighboring nodes and seeing if those overlap. That might actually clean up our code quite a bit. Hmm. How much time have we got so far? Okay, we're doing pretty well. Yeah, I think what we'll do is... Maybe we'll make a new scene. Our cube rotation test is going very well. But maybe we could just make a separate scene and try and do some generation of paths. Ooh. You know, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this, or I'm going to end this episode, and <clears throat> instead of doing generation, I'm just going to hop into Blender and uh, make some really, really simple faces, just so we can start to see the diagonal faces and the transitions between the two. For testing purposes, eventually I totally want to generate them all at runtime. I think that would give us a lot more visual power, so we can make the level look a lot more interesting. And, um, you know, it'd just be a really fun exercise to do. So yeah, I think that's it. We were able to accomplish our goal for episode 13. We can control the faces that are set. On the cubes, we still have some pathfinding errors, but I believe we'll be seeing a lot of those. So uh, that's it for me today. I hope you all learned something, had a little bit of fun, and I'll see you again later.